Okay, well, what a great day to be us. We are going to talk about exponent rules with rational exponents. So where I want to start is first I just want to review what are the basic exponent rules. And I actually think this is a great challenge for yourself. Um, one of the things just in general as you take more math classes, this is a list you should be able to recite from memory. So if you are going on to take things like recalculus or calculus or anything like that, this is like something that you really just need to know off the top of your head. So um, let's just see how well you remember. Worst that happens is you forget, but make a guess, write it down, and then let's see how you did. Okay, so let's take a look. So the first one, you add the exponents. So the exponents m and m, you add them. For the second one, so these are always the two that everyone mixes up. The second one, you multiply the exponents. Um, for the third one, you subtract the exponents, and we've been using that. Um, so I'll take, and we're assuming that m is greater than n in this case. And then for negative exponents, really what that effectively means is that if your variable was on the top, like here, then you send it to the bottom. So you basically just reverse the position of that variable. Um, so we will talk more about that as we move along. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is just to kind of help warm us up for this lesson, I just really quickly want to review a couple of operations with fractions. Um, so I want you just to pause for a second and just quickly remind yourself how do you do these problems and then you'll see where this is going in a moment. Okay, so hopefully you paused the video and tried this. Um, so there's a couple different ways you could have done this. I'm just going to multiply straight across to get 10 over 18 and then I notice that I can simplify this farther so I can divide the top and bottom by 2. So this becomes 5 over 9. Now for this second one, 2 fifths times 10, um, I know that I can rewrite 10 as 10 over 1. And the other thing that I notice is that 5 goes into 10 twice. So this actually just turns into the calculation 2 times 2. So this is really just 4 over 1, which equals 4 in the end. And the last one is um, adding two fractions. So in this case, now I've got to, I've got to get a common denominator. Um, the common denominator between these will be 15. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by 5 on top and on bottom. And I'm going to multiply this other fraction by 3 on top and on bottom. So this will then turn into 10 over 15 plus 6 over 15, and this will be 16 over 15. Okay, so with that in mind, now what we're going to do is we're actually going to combine all of these ideas together. So like I said, it's a great day to be you. It's going to be so fun. So we're going to simplify, and the whole thing with this is that your final answer cannot contain negative exponents. Okay, so here's the kind of stuff that we're looking at. So I have x to the 2 thirds times x to the 1 fifth. So if you are rusty on your exponent rules, you might want to have this sheet maybe just on another sheet of paper next to you. So what I need to do here is I need to add the exponents. So this is going to be really taking 2 thirds plus 1 fifth. Now, don't be shy on taking up space if you need it. This is the operation that I need to do, but you don't have to cram it all together. You can always like do the math on the side, right, with plenty of space. And so then again, this is going to have a common denominator. I've got to get a common denominator. So the common denominator in this case will be 15. So I multiply the first fraction top and bottom by 5, the second one by 3. So now I have 10 over 15 plus 3 over 15. So this is 13 over 15. And so that's going to be the exponent in this case. So totally possible with problems like this where you're going to have to do that work of finding a common denominator. The other thing you might have to do, so here we're going to have to use the product rule, right? So we've got the set of parentheses, so I'm going to use this rule here, but I'm going to be using it now with fractions. And one of the most commonly missed things with these types of problems, by the way, is that so this exponent on the outside ultimately needs to get applied to every single single part on the inside. So there are three factors being multiplied together, three things in the inside. Each one of those needs to be hit by this outside um, uh, exponent. Okay, so one thing I like to do to make sure that I do that is I actually write out that number to that exponent so that I don't forget to do it. It's really common to see people forget. And then for these other two variables with these exponents, I need to multiply. So this will be x to the 2 thirds, that's a terrible looking 3, times 3 halves, and this will be y 
to the six times three halves. And now you see why we did that little review on working with fractions, just so that we're kind of fresh on it. Okay, so four to the three halves. I take the square root of four, which is two. Two cubed is eight, so this is eight. Here, when I multiply these all together, well, the twos and the threes drop out, so I'm actually just left with x. And then for this final one, so again, you can either do the operation in here, or if it's not enough space, just write it off on the side. It's no big deal. And so then two goes into six three times, so I'm left with three times three, so this will be y to the ninth. Okay, so let's keep going with this idea then. And so now here for C, so now I've got some like division and, and uh, I've got negative exponents and all this good stuff. Okay, so first of all, um, best practices with negative exponents. Don't do it all in your head. I beg of you, take the time to write out some extra steps. So this is the only part of this problem that has a negative exponent. So what I need to do is I need to reverse where it's at. It's on top, it needs to get moved to the bottom. So before I do anything else, I'm just going to rewrite this problem. Now I just have the x on top. I've still got this x to the 1 6, y to the 2 fifths, and then y to the 1 fifth. Do not do this in your head. That is like, people screw that up all the time. And it's it's like one of those things where I get that it looks really simple, but it's there's a lot going on in like this one step. So just slow your brain down, write it out. Okay, so now looking at this, now what else do I have to do? Well, these I can add, right? And they already have a common denominator. These I'm going to have to create a common denominator. So what's the common denominator between two thirds and one six? It would be six. So I need to multiply this fraction by two on top and on bottom. So let's see, now this becomes x to the four over six, x to the one over six, and then I can add these. So two fifths and one fifth will be three fifths. Okay, and so now I'm in the home stretch. So four six is bigger than one six, so I can cancel this out and subtract off the one six. So I'm left with x to the three over six, y to the 3 over 5, which can be rewritten as x to the 1 half, y to the 3 over 5. Okay, are we having fun yet? <laughs> uh, all right, so, well, I, I'm sure you said yes, you're having a lot of fun, which is why we're going to have even more fun with this guy. <laughs> so, all right, these types of problems, um, I think, give people a lot of anxiety, and you know, the thing is, you just need to take your time. Again, don't be a hero. Don't go crazy trying to just do it all in your head. There's no reason for that. Detail and going nice and slow is the best way to handle something like this. Okay, now the best practice for this is to first just work on simplifying the inside. Forget that this outside part even exists. So all I want you to do is just pause the video and do whatever you need to do to simplify the inside as far as possible. So when you've gotten to that point, which, which you should be able to do, so go ahead and do that, and when you think you're there, hit play, and then we'll check. Okay, so I don't care about this outside exponent, so I'm gonna rewrite this. So 125 x to the fourth, and then, okay, so actually just to make this nice and visual, this x to the one half needs to come up, and then this y to the negative one third needs to come down. So the way that this is gonna look is I'm gonna have x to the fourth, x to the one half, and then in the denominator, I'm gonna have y to the two fifths, y to the one third. And I've still got this thing on the outside, but I'm not worried about it right now. So I still have to finish simplifying the inside. So now I have to get some common denominators. So I wanna take four plus one half. So see how I take some space because I can't just do it all, like I don't wanna cram it all in the problem. Okay, so to do this, I really want to think of 4 as being 4 over 1, and then I want to rewrite this as a fraction over 2. So to do that, I just multiply the top and bottom by 2, and so this becomes 8 over 2 plus 1 over 2, so that's 9 over 2. Okay, so that's for the x's. And then for the y's, I need to do 2 fifths plus 1 third. I need to get a common denominator of 15, so multiply the top and bottom here by 3, and the top and bottom here by 5. So I get six over 15 plus five over 15, and so that's gonna be 11 over 15. Okay, so I'm gonna now rewrite this 125 x to the nine halves over y 
to the 11 over 15s and then, okay, I still haven't done anything with the outside. Okay, so now let me clear some space and let's continue on with our wonderful day. So um, now I need to actually use this. I can't go any farther on the inside. I really think this is the best way to handle this. I know that there are more ways to do it. Some people are like, oh, I'll just go ahead and distribute this to all the inside, but you just explode this problem with tons of numbers. So just simplify the inside as much as possible and then we'll pivot to out here. Okay, so now again, I don't wanna to do too much too fast here. So first I just wanna get rid of the negative exponent. So to do that, I'm going to flip Let's see, this is 11 over 15. I'm gonna flip the inside. So see how I've flipped it, and this is nine over two. Half the battle sometimes is rewriting the problem correctly. <laughs> okay, so now I've gone from having a negative exponent to no negative exponent. And so now, um, and I, I flipped everything. Now I can take this exponent and apply it to all the inside. So now I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna apply here, here and here. So I would actually like you to pause the video and just try to finish this and then let's see if you get the right answer and hit play when you're ready. Okay, so I'm gonna have y to the 11 over 15 times two over three. I have 125 to the two thirds and then I have x to the nine halves times two over three. Okay, so this all will simplify then to, let's see, this becomes y to the 22nd over 45, 125 to the 2 fifths, so the cube root of 125 is 5, 5 squared is 25, and then here the 2's cancel out and the 3 divides with the 9, so this actually just becomes x to the 3rd. Okay, so let's try that one more time. Same idea. I want you to try this one all the way on your own. Hit play when you're ready. Okay, so first things first, I need to just move things with the negative exponents, so I need to simplify the inside. So this becomes 4x to the 6, x to the 3rd, and then I have y to the 1 half, y to the 1 third, not paying attention to the outside exponent. And then, so 1 half plus 1 third, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply the first one by three, the second one by two. So this will be three over six plus two over six. So this is five, six. Okay, so this becomes four X to the ninth, Y to the five over six, and then all of that to the negative three halves. Okay, so let me clear some space. The next thing is I wanna get rid of the negative, ex negative exponent. So I'm gonna flip everything. So this becomes Y to the five, six over four X to the ninth. And then now this is to the positive three halves. And now I can work on applying this exponent to all the parts of the problem, right? So this will be y to the five, six times three over two, four to the three halves, and then x to the ninth times three over two. Okay, so let's see. The three will cancel out with the six and become a two. Sorry if you can hear my dog barking. Uh, so let's see, this becomes five over four, eight X to the 27 over two. Cause remember this nine is over an invisible one. Okay, and so that brings us to the end of this video while my dog barks like crazy. Uh, I do have more examples and instruction if you wanna see that at a slower pace. So make this work for you and, and get whatever you need out of it. If you found this helpful, consider hitting that like or subscribe button. And I will talk to you guys in another video.